Hi, this is the part 2 of the GATE 2024 paper. Here, we will talk about the numerical problems. For theoretical questions, please watch part 1. Before discussing the solution, I will highly encourage you to solve these numericals without watching the solution video. Because while watching the video, the numerical may appear simple or the simplification step may look easy. but if it is not practiced several times, there is high probability that either you will not be able to solve it or you may make silly mistakes during exam. Therefore, I will suggest you to solve these numericals by yourself first and then watch this video for additional information. So, let's start with the first question. In question 124, we need to calculate the percentage crystallinity of polyethylene sample. Here, a specific volume of sample and crystalline and amorphous fraction is given. As we know, we can calculate the percentage crystallinity of a polymeric material using densities of amorphous and crystalline phase. But here, a specific volume is given. If we see the relationship between a specific volume and density, we will find that density is inversely proportional to a specific volume. So, we can calculate density of sample and amorphous and crystalline fraction by taking the inverse of their respective specific volume. Now, we can put the values of densities in the equation and calculate percentage crystallinity. After simplification, the percentage crystallinity of the sample is 69%. In question 125, we need to find Tg of a 50-50 blend of PPO and polystyrene. The Tg of PPO and polystyrene is given. So, we can solve this question using Fox equation. Before inserting temperature in the equation, we need to convert them in Kelvin. And since it is a 50-50 blend, the weight fraction will be 0.5 for both. Now, we can insert these values in the equation and calculate Tg of the blend. On simplification, we will find that the Tg of the blend is 140 degree Celsius. On a side note, if you see the question, it mentioned that it is a miscible blend. But this can become a tricky question if it says it is an immiscible blend. In that case, there will be two Tg's, both 206.8 degrees Celsius and 90 degrees Celsius because each polymer will form separate domains and they will retain their Tg. Now, let's move to the next question. This question is relatively simple. Since we can simply use the rule of mixture formula to calculate the modulus of the composite. The formula of the rule of mixture is given here. Elastic modulus and volume fraction of fiber and matrix are given. So we can simply put these values in the equation and calculate the elastic modulus of the composite. On simplification, the value is 107 gigapascal. One side note here too. In the question, it is asking to calculate the longitudinal elastic modulus, but if it asks for transverse elastic modulus, then what will be the answer? For a continuous fiber composite, which is an anisotropic material, fiber or the machine direction is called longitudinal direction and perpendicular to machine direction is called transverse direction. And if we see the composite cross section, the modulus of the composite in longitudinal direction will depend on fibers modulus and volume fraction. But in the transverse direction, it will always be equal to modulus of the matrix. Okay, now let's move on to the next question. 
in question 127 we need to calculate the number average molecular weight of a polyamide 66 sample here the concentration of monomers and ends group is given to solve this question we need to find the degree of polymerization and concentration of polymer chain since one mole contains Avogadro's number of molecule so we can treat mole as a number as we know for polymer which contains different type of chain ends like amine and carboxylic then concentration of n group is equal to concentration of polymer chain as concentration of n group is given we can use this as concentration of number of polymer chains in the sample so the number of polymer chain will be 0 0.002 mole now we can calculate the degree of polymerization by taking the ratio of initial monomer or repeat unit concentration and final polymer chain concentration for polyamide 66 the repeat unit consists of both hexamethylene diamine and adipic acid and since equal mole of both units are added so the concentration of repeat unit will be equal to concentration of one of the monomeric units so the concentration of initial repeat unit will be 0 0.08 mole so the degree of polymerization will be 0 0.08 divided by 0 0.002 which will be equal to 40 now to calculate the number average molecular weight we have to multiply dp and molecular weight of repeat unit which is 226 gram per mole so the number average molecular weight of polyamide 66 sample will be 9040 gram per mole in question 128 we need to calculate the weight average molecular weight of a polymer mixture consisting of two monodispersed samples molecular weight of each fraction is given and the total mole of the mixture is also given as we discussed previously one mole is equal to Avogadro number of chains so mole is actually number of chains so to calculate weight average molecular weight we need to find how many moles of each sample are present in the mixture let's assume n1 mole of first sample and n2 mole of second sample is mixed as total number of chains in the mixture and weight of the mixture is given we can write n1 plus n2 is equal to 0 0.04 also the weight of the sample will be its molecular weight multiplied by how many moles of this sample is in the mixture so we can also write that the sum of the weight of the sample will be equal to weight of the mixture after solving these equations we can find the values of n1 and n2 which is equal to 0 0.015 and 0 0.025 as we have both molecular weight and number of each fraction we can insert them in this equation to calculate weight average molecular weight after simplification the value is 62500 question 129 will test students mathematical skill more than their knowledge of polymer science here viscosity of polymer at different shear rate is given also the relationship between viscosity and shear rate is given which contains two constants n and lambda value of n is given and we need to calculate the value of lambda by inserting the values of shear rate and viscosities in the equation we can find these two equations now we can take the ratio of the two equations which will lead to this equation where only unknown is lambda and after simplification we can find out 
that the value of lambda is 0 0.52. In this question, we need to find the ratio of viscosity average molecular weight of two polymer samples. As we have mentioned in several previous videos, it is very important that you memorize the formulas of solution viscosity because almost every year there are questions based on these equations. In this question also, we need to use these formulas. Basically, relationship between intrinsic viscosity, reduced viscosity and specific viscosity. As we can see here, intrinsic viscosity is reduced viscosity at zero concentration and reduced viscosity is specific viscosity divided by concentration. So from the plot, the y-axis intercept will be reduced viscosity at zero concentration which is equal to intrinsic viscosity. So the intrinsic viscosity of polymer solution 1 is 25 and 2 is 40. Now to find the ratio between viscosity average molecular weight of these two polymers, we can use the Marks Hawkins equation. Based on the given information, we can write these equations. Now we can take the ratio of the two equations which will lead to elimination of constant K. As values of A and intrinsic viscosities are known, we can insert those values in the equation. And on simplification, we can find the ratio of viscosity average molecular weight of the two polymer is 0 0.39. Question 131 is a relatively simple since this question have been asked several times. To solve this numerical, we need to use the stress relaxation equation for Kelvin White model, which is represented by this equation. As elastic modulus of spring, viscosity of dash product, applied stress, and time is given, we can simply put these values in the equation and calculate the strain value after one hour. On simplification, we find that the strain value is 0 0.38. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any question, please feel free to reach out to us. All the best.